Hi, I'm Tom Frazier, and uh, I'm going to talk to you a bit about uh, the things I've learned about pitching a technology startup over the years. Now, it's not definitive, but this is just the way my brain thinks, and uh, I've been talking about this for a while now, so I thought I'd put it into a deck. So, hope this hope this helps someone out there. Uh, what I'd like to do is share the things you need to think about, then what goes into your deck, and then how you deliver it. Uh, and I've broken it into those three buckets. So the first are some things to think about before you even start putting a slide deck together. Always, always, always cater your message for the audience you're talking to. Chances are you've got all these words in your head about we're the best thing, we're the first to do this, and we've got this engine with this new business model, blah, blah. All that is just shit. Just throw it away. It doesn't mean anything. They're all words that waste everyone's time. Just don't use them. And the people that you're pitching to, they've given up their time. So they want you to succeed because if they wanted you to fail, they wouldn't give you their time. right? So make sure you give them information that is beneficial to them as well. It shouldn't just be beneficial for you. It should be beneficial for them. The second main thing to think about is how people learn. Uh, I like the, the VAC model, which is uh, visual, audible, and kinetic. Everyone learns with all three of these elements, and some have a bias towards one or the other. So a visual learner will want more information presented graphically. An audible learner listens exactly to what you're saying and may not care so much about the slides. And then a kinetic learner is someone who learns by doing. You know, you don't learn to become a dancer by reading a book. You go out and take a dance class. Uh, so we're going to focus mainly on the first two, and at the end of the presentation, I'll tell you how to rope in the third. And if you can get all three of these, chances are you're going to get through to your audience, and you're going to have a more positive outcome about your business. Third thing is a type of pitch. What is your goal? Why are you here? What is your story? What you know? I'm going to go through this complete pitch of all the topic areas, but there are a lot of derivatives and and subtypes as well. So you know, Dropbox was a, a personal story because he forgot a USB stick one day, so why not get rid of USB sticks? You know, blah, blah, blah. There's all these types. So pick one that you think is the best fit for you and why you're pitching. And uh, it is good practice to get the complete pitch down and then pull out the parts you need rather than try to develop one of these angles and then retrofit a complete story later. So just go with the complete one build out the deck, and then make sub-decks out of that. So let's get into it. Let's get into the meat, which is all the content. And later we'll talk about the way to deliver that. But the content, it's all right here. If you uh, take one, one note, if you write down one thing, uh, here are the pieces you need to cover. And these are not unique. I, you know, I haven't invented anything new here. Whether it's Guy Kawasaki or Tom Peters or Dave McClure or any really involved person who pitches a business thinks more or less the same stuff needs to be there. And the reason why is because it's complete. There are fewer questions that need to be asked about what you're doing if you present all of this stuff. So why not make it easy for everyone, focus on what the audience wants to hear, which is this stuff. So I've prepared a uh, fake deck in here, and I'm just going to walk you through how this fake deck works across all of those topics. I've added a V for visual and A for uh, audible, things that you should be covering while this slide is presented and what you cover on the slide. And uh, in this case, let's start with the title, title slide. Uh, if you're pitching, the audience more than likely has listened to numerous pitches. So 101, put your name, put your URL, put your logo on the slide. And remember that the slide that is up on screen for the longest period of time is likely going to be your title slide or your last slide. So make sure that that has information that people will use at that point in time. So in this case, basic info. Now, what do you say on this slide? And uh, I'm a director for the Founder Institute, and Adeo has come up with this uh, format, and I think it's, I think it's great. It, it sums up everything you need to say. So my company X is developing a thing, you know, a website or an application uh, to help a certain target market solve some problem and you're doing it with secret sauce. Now the reason why you're developing a website or an app is because just make it simple. 
you know, you need to cater to the audience, work in a frame of reference they understand. And so you're not building a social commerce engine. You're building a website. That's it. It's a website. No need to be ri ridiculously fancy for no reason. Um, the buyer is the target demographic. Again, pretty simple. The solve a problem. If you're not solving a big problem, no one cares. So just stop. And the secret sauce is really indicative of why I should be listening to you as opposed to the guy right behind you trying to do the same thing. So title slide, very key. It sets the tone for the whole presentation. From there, we go into the problem. It's still very early in the pitch. We're maybe 20 seconds in, 30 seconds in. Uh, the problem needs to be a story. It's not a fact. It's not a figure or a chart. It is a story. Sell me on why a problem exists in the world. For example, one of the companies I'm involved with, uh, Process Go, we've built Process Go because large enterprises struggle to go to tender for new services. It's very time consuming, it's costly, it takes a lot of people, it's manual and slow and very cumbersome. Right? I've just now set up that story that v you visualize how problematic that is. So make sure you, you capture that sensory information there. And, you know, it's a story. People like to listen to stories. So, so be sure to, to tell it that way. Now, the next slide here is the market size, the opportunity. And this is where metrics are going to back up the story you just started. And that is facts and figures. How big is this problem? You know, for Process Go, it's a $300 billion industry where there's 100,000 plus of these deals per year. And the deal sizes are getting smaller, but there's a fixed cost to do work, blah, 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 all kinds of numbers. Make sure they understand that there is a real need to solve the problem. And from there, bam, this is where your money shot goes. This is your solution that is your screenshot. It's You're, you're showing people in the room, you're showing the panelists, whatever, that your way forward is the way forward. So the problem is there, it's really big, and guess what, you've got a solution for it. From there you need to show how your solution makes money. Do you charge a subscription? Is it a single time fee? Do you have a widget you sell in a grocery store? Who are the players? Is it a channel thing? Is it all online sales? What, what is it that you're making money off of? Ideally, what you want to be talking about here, as opposed to showing, you want to be talking about how your solution, the way you've built it, the way your business model works, is you actually have a good viral coefficient. That is, for every one user that you bring onto the system, that user helps generate more than one new user. So if you've got, uh, you invite one person, that person then invites four or five people, who then invite four or five more people, etc. It's a very viral business that's, you know, the problem is there, it's really big, your solution is there, and wow, is it going to be viral, it's going to go massive, which is going to make you a lot of money. Hence the next slide. You go right into it. You can feel the cadence building of this presentation. You want the financial projections. You are future pacing someone else in the audience. You're taking them down a journey to realize that what you're doing actually matters a lot. So get on this train or get out of the way because you're going places. And it is really important that you understand as a startup that it has to be a home run. Now, I'm not saying fake the numbers here because that's pointless. Um, but if you're solving a problem that isn't going to be a home run, then just stop. There's no point in building and spending time on something that is a small problem that's not going to go anywhere. Uh, you want to focus on problems that can have a dramatic impact and you can make money along the way. Now, secret sauce. This is where it's another, another screenshot. It's the uniqueness about your business. Why are they listening to you instead of the person behind you in line? You need to show that your secret sauce is there. It's defendable. It's unique. You know, there is something about maybe your background or your team or whatever it is. You need to sell it here uh, because you've just taken them on the journey of the, uh, you know, the financial metrics of this is where we're going to be in three years or five years. 
And then this is like the secret sauce is the clincher. It's they believe it. They go, right, they're solving a problem. Their solution is fantastic. I see how they're making money. They're gonna make a lot of money. And wow, they're this secret sauce is actually gonna let them do it. That's the the absolute clincher. You then need to state some facts, right? Avoid late questions later and just be upfront about who your competitors are. Put their logos up there. Why are they competitors? You know, it, if you put them here, it shows that you've thought about it and it proves that you know the industry you're going into. You know, no one wants to invest in, whether it's money or time, invest in somebody who's ignorant. You need to prove that you've thought long and hard about how you're going to address the problem and address the competitors. And the team. The team is the most important part. Startups are about the people. Uh, you know, it's the idea is secondary. The business is definitely tertiary. The people are what's going to make it. And the reason why is because of the passion. You are starting a business because you're so passionate about a problem that you're going to solve it. And so even if the way you're solving it doesn't work out exactly, then you're going to change it a little bit or move forward or move into a different area. But they believe, you want people to believe in you and the team. And the four major areas are going to be the hustler, the hacker, the designer, and the domain expert. That doesn't mean it's four people, but you need to convince us that those four roles are being addressed by the team you've put together. The all-important traction slide. So we've now kind of validated this problem exists. Your solution is there. It's a great one that's going to make money. You are the team to do it. And guess what? We are already along the path. You need to prove that you're not at the starting line. You need to prove that you're rounding the first corner and you've already got some traction. Now that traction can be money. It can be users. It can be product development. You need to tell me what good traction metrics are for you. Um, but that needs to be compelling. I need to believe that you have been doing this for a while and you're already on the way. And wrap all of this stuff up at the end. The title slide says, here's what I'm going to tell you. Then the whole deck, you're telling them. And now the summary, you're going to tell them what you've told them. Okay, it's a very simple formula. And put some words up there with checkboxes, product, tick, team, tick, business model, tick, traction, tick, and the all-important ask is untick. You may be asking for money, you may be asking for a new partnership, you may be asking to be customers, get customers, leave the ask there as an untick box and read them word for word to connect the visual learners with the audible learners, with the kinetic learners, make this slide point blank, words with tick boxes, one tick box at the end with whatever your ask is and read them line by line. It works. It is a summary of what you've just told them. Whew. Okay, so that's all of the content. That's everything. That was a real uh, fast flyby. Uh, that was the, the, the meat and now we're going to go to the potatoes. We're going to talk about the delivery. Now this isn't about the deck. This is about you and how you're presenting this information. First and foremost, be authentic. Your brand is not up there with a logo and a speaker. It's you as an individual, a person. So, you know, if you're not the funny guy, don't be funny. If, you know, you, you just need to make sure that you are shining through because people will spot a fake. And it doesn't matter how great you fake it. At the end of the day, that's not who you are. So just be yourself in whatever capacity, whatever that means for you. Tell a story, and even better, show one. Prove that this is an emotional journey to yourself, and then communicate that to other people. You know, everyone likes an emotion, emotional journey. Everyone likes a story, and that's how we can relate to other people. We don't, most of us don't relate primarily on facts and figures. We relate person to person. And this one is an, I don't know why it's so avoided in startups, probably because it's, uh, it's just ignorance or unknowing, uh, but recency is king. If you can offer a bit of insight that is more recent than the other person, that's gold. Like we talked about in the beginning, you should be giving them information in exchange for their time. This is how you do it. 
And it's very simple. Take your business, your competitors, your market, your problem, whatever you want to look up, it doesn't matter. Google it the day that you do a pitch. Find a piece of recent relevant information and share it with everybody. In fact, last week, this thing happened. Or just yesterday, I was on the phone with one of the biggest companies in the world and they said blah. Or I recently found out about a focus group that analyze this, blah, and you're sharing information that they would otherwise not have because it's more recent than what they've got. And your personal credibility. This needs to constantly be iterated throughout your pitch. You know, when we talked about the domain expert, you need to have passion behind the problem you're solving. Prove to me you've worked in that area. Prove to the room that your teammate has credibility. Show us that, uh, you know, we should be listening to you for a reason, that you're not just a talking head about something you have no experience in. And so that's the meat, that's the potatoes. Now a little bit, two bits of gravy. Uh, the first bit is, uh, it's called the speaker presentation form. And you can analyze great orators from all, of, all over the world, all throughout time, and they have a pretty consistent format. And that is they toggle between what today is like and imagine what tomorrow could be, if only dot, dot, dot. Uh, so on that fake deck that I we've just gone through, you'll see in the bottom right-hand corners, things like IS, CB, and NB. Uh, that's focusing on what is today and what could be tomorrow. And if you bounce back and forth between these, you can really set, at the, set up for the ending, where the end is all about uh, the new bliss right your team and your traction and your summary slide should really show how the problem that exists is gone away with your solution because you've bounced back and forth across that as you've gone along and this model works uh just look up Martin Luther King uh speaker presentation form and uh there's a fantastic analysis done by Nancy here uh who shows exactly how this works and it's unbelievable and you should be doing this without a doubt. Uh, some little additional gravy I want to rope back into the kinetic learning. Uh, again kinetic learning you can't teach dance by reading a book you need to experience it. So what we can do is we can actually anchor things physically in the room. So imagine on your left hand side being the problem or what's happening today and then imagine on the right hand side being your solution, your company, or how it could be tomorrow. That's the new bliss. So the easy way to do this is whenever you talk about the problem or you talk about how it works today, point your body a little bit to the left, do a gesture with your hands to the left, or even walk to the left if you're on a stage. And physically anchor the mental idea that you're trying to discuss that's a problem in that spot, in that location. Then when you use that speaker presentation form and you toggle back and forth, you know, that's the is, the what is is on the left. And then what could be, imagine what could be over here on the right hand side. And then you start walking that way and you talk about what you're doing and how important it is and you know how, how groundbreaking it is. Then you look left and you walk left again and you go, but this problem is so massive and so many people struggle with it, blah, blah, blah. And then you look to your right and make hand gestures to your right and talk about your solution again. And your team is the best it can possibly be. You've got the dream team. And this anchoring, combined with that speaker form, combined with a well-structured presentation, gets you along the way. Obviously, the, the, you know, the, the delivery is all up to you. And that's why you need to be authentic. That's why you need to have you know, credibility and recency and all those things. But this should be a good construct for you to start thinking about. You know, so do some learning before you start your deck, build your complete deck, practice your delivery, and use this speaker form and anchoring as, as ways to really enhance it. And you will absolutely knock it out of the park. So thank you very much. Keep on pitching, keep practicing. Uh, two quick tips. Record yourself just over audio and listen to it. That will help you harness what the audible learners are going to get out of your presentation. 
And then the record yourself visually and understand what people who are visual learners are going to get. And if you can, try all this anchoring in the speaker form to really connect with the, everyone kinetically. So thank you very much and uh, hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a note if you found it helpful. Drop me a note if you didn't find it helpful. And uh, thank you again.